know if I've uh, shown this or not, but on the eighth, well, ninth floor of my building, I have this uh, barbecue area. Uh, the charcoal grill is part of it, and it's got these uh, these tables here. It's got a outdoor sink. It's got a couple bathrooms there. One with a shower. Um, it's got a nice view of the city. It's got a jacuzzi, and you can reserve this pretty much uh, whenever it's available, which is most of the time. Every once in a while, there'll be birthday parties or something up here. But today, I'm going to do my video up here. So I haven't been feeling very good, and then um, to top it all off, I caught the flu, so I'm trying to get over it. So I thought I'd do this video out in the sun, maybe help dry me out. Uh, my throat's a little uh, raggedy. My hair is way overdue for a haircut. I'm a mess. But let's see if we can get through this together. Today I want to talk about the word gringo. It comes up way too often and I understand where the questions come from because when I first uh, went to Colombia years ago and then when I moved to Ecuador I always felt the same way as the people that are asking the questions. And what is that? The question is why do you put up with being called a gringo? Isn't it an insult? Or more than that, why do you use the word gringo? Why, why are you running yourself down? And so I think it's, it's an important enough thing, particularly about culture. And it's a little different, but similar to Ecuador and Colombia. And so uh, today, that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, because I haven't been feeling good, I, I still haven't done the Circassia thing. I, you know, I hope to have that up uh, before... Um, well, probably by Saturday. It'll go up as a bonus video. And this will go up as the scheduled Wednesday video. So back on topic, the gringo. The idea being the word gringo is a racist word. It's an insult. Or it's just rude. And I'm here to tell you that it really depends on where. For example... When I would go to Mexico, I've been to Mexico, I don't know, maybe half a dozen times. When I go to Mexico, I would hear it occasionally, and it was always, it's a derogatory term in Mexico, and there's a historical reason for that, which I will mention. And yes, the word in Mexico is generally used with contempt. Uh, in the nicest of situations, it's contempt in the worst of situations. It's a really derogatory term. Now context is everything, and of course there may be some exceptions to that. But in general, it's, it's a negative term. Now in Ecuador and Colombia, it's really a different matter. In Ecuador and Colombia, it's used simply as an identifier. There's no ill intent behind it. And it's basically, it's any non-native is what it boils down to, or foreigner. Uh, with some exceptions to that. So let's look at the history, where, where this term even came from. The first known use of this word was in 1787. It was found in a Spanish dictionary and it was used as basically any foreigner or a heavily accented Spanish language speaker. It was primarily referring to the Irish. There were a lot of Irish at that time uh, flooding into Spain for reasons of um, they were escaping problems in their homeland and Spain was one of the places they would go. The United States also had this massive influx of Irish but in Spain because there were so many it was a term used for them and in most cases it was a relatively neutral term. Now let's fast forward to the Spanish-American War, it's 1846 around there 
the Americans, the U.S., had troops in Mexico. As wars were fought in those times, in the, in the night you could actually hear the camp of the other person, of your enemy. And it was pretty common, it was pretty typical. Now, the way the story goes is this word was already established. The word gringo, as I mentioned, in Spain. And the root of it was grego, Greek, non-Spanish. Grego is, uh, you know, the word just kind of turned into gringo. There are other theories, that's probably the most plausible. To put your finger on the exact, nobody really knows, but this is the most plausible. But it was a word that remained kind of in the background. But in the Spanish-American War, there was a song that was popular. And the song was, Green Grows the Grass of Home. And so the Yankees, within earshot of the Mexican campsites at night, the, the Yankees would sit there, as people did in those days, they would do these group songs. That being a popular song, they would, they would sing that. Well, the Mexicans would hear that, and they didn't really... Uh, they didn't understand English, but they would hear the green grows. And it would reminisce to this archaic word that was known in the Spanish language, but not heavily used. That's why in Mexico it, it was used as a bad connotation because the word related to the enemy. It related to what they saw as invaders. And, and so that word in Mexico to this day remains with a negative connotation and it's it's understandable you know it, it harkens back to in World War II you know they called them krauts uh, they called uh, Japanese uh, nips uh, for Nippon but it, they call them nips and you know when you're having an having an enemy in war people tend to want to dehumanize them because it's it's a little easier to fight the war if you're not thinking about, you know, the daughters and sons they have left at home. So, <clears throat> so you had this word that had a negative connotation around it. Now let's move to Ecuador. We'll go to Ecuador. And how's the word used there? Well, the word used there is really the same as in Colombia, really in in all South America. The negative connotation is Mexico and some in Central America. But when you get to South America, all the way down to Argentina, in most cases, it really has no negative connotation. It's simply an identifier. And you know, it's a foreigner. In Ecuador, there's actually a bit of a plus because in Ecuador, there's, there's still a strong holdover from the years of the Spanish that had a caste system. And I, I did a couple videos, one on uh, prejudice in Ecuador, and, and this was part of it, the caste system. The mentality of it still exists to this day. And I say it's a bit of a plus, is you have a tendency to actually be treated a little bit better because the gringos r relate to the white Spanish, which were the top of the food chain. And so it, it just kind of by default it puts you at the top of the food chain. In other words, you'll be treated generally with respect simply based on that connotation. Now, that's something about Ecuador I've never really been fond of, but uh, you know, it's certainly not a negative thing. And again, it's, it's, really, it's really just an identifier. It, you know, it's a white foreigner. And it isn't always necessarily white, but generally white foreigner. Oh, by the way, in Mexico, it primarily refers to white Americans, U United States, USA, uh, because of the history of their use. That's generally what the term is used for. Now, an exception in Ex Ecuador is a place that's heavily frequented by expats. So if you have a lot of expats, you know, in one area, what happens is you're going to have a lot of good interaction, but you're going to have a lot of negative interaction. You're going to have a lot of condescending people. You know, the oh, the poor little taxi driver, I better give him this extra 50 cents so he can feed his family kind of thing, which just causes, you know, bad feelings and resentment. You know, the old saying is familiarity breeds contempt. 
So in heavily expat areas, the term gringo can have a certain attachment to it, not because of the word itself, but because of the negative experience they may have had with the foreigners from Canada or the United States or England or whatever. <clears throat> so context is important, but even at that, the word in and of itself is not used as a derogatory insult term. Now in Colombia, it really is just a matter of description. Uh, I'll give you some other examples, and this holds true also in Ecuador. Uh, let me look at my list here. Uh, for example, you may call your girlfriend Flaquita. Flaca, Flaquita. They add the Ita or Ito as a kind of an endearing cuteness to the word. So Flaquita, what the, that means is my skinny little girlfriend. Oh, isn't it cute? You know, it, and that's a that's a typical term. Or you may call her Gordita, and it doesn't mean she's fat. Gorda means fat, fat girl. Gordo is 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 the masculine version. It doesn't mean she's fat. It's an endearing term that they'll use. Uh, Negrita, you know, if you got a, a black girlfriend or a, a friend, it doesn't have to be a girlfriend. Or it's it's an endearing term. It's not like using, you know, the N word or Negro or something like that it, it, from the context in the United States. It's simply a descriptor. Uh, Chino, China, uh, for Chinese. It's it's simply a description. It's not a it's not a judgment. It's not um, an evaluation of the person. It's just a descriptor. Hey, look at that white person. You know, we say that all the time for things like, oh, look, you can see there's tourists over there. Well, you know, are you saying anything bad about them? Well, in context, maybe you are, maybe you're not. But the word in and of itself is not an offensive word, and that's the way it's used here in Colombia. It's simply a descriptor. Now here it doesn't just mean USA, it, it can mean pretty much anybody. It, it could be Italian. You, anyone can, can fall into the category, uh, particularly in Colombia because it's such a blended society. It, it, it has a mixture of, it's a melting pot. It's like the United States, it's a melting pot. <clears throat> so it's, it's non-Spanish speakers or non-original. Uh, foreigners and that's that's really all it means so when I hear it in Ecuador or I hear it in Colombia it's simply not an insult now for me it was an adjustment because years ago my first experience in a Latin American country was Mexico and there I I saw the use and when I lived in California I saw it quite a bit. I mean, when they would say gringo is almost like you're spitting at the same time. It was obviously a term of disgust. And so when I first arrived in Ecuador, or years ago in Colombia, and I heard that word, it just kind of grated on me. You know, it's like, you know, what, what do you mean? Why are you calling me that? You know, it's like, why are you insulting me? And it took me a while to understand uh, from my ex-wife basically taught me that it, it's just it's just a word it's just a description there's nothing to be offended about so from one standpoint I understood that but from an emotional standpoint because of my previous experiences it was still it was hard to hear so I get where the question comes from but after living in Ecuador for three plus years coming back to Colombia and all the time I spent here again Eventually, it just kind of works in like any other word, like anything else that goes on, you know, in another culture, you, you kind of adopt to it. And so now I use it as a regular basis, and yeah, I'm a gringo, because here that's the description of who I am. But I have no problem saying it because nobody says it to me or about me in any kind of a bad way. Just who I am, you know, it's like, they're a Colombian. You know, the, the use of that word is not going to insult them. Or how about another word, a Latino or Hispanic? You know, that's, that's a descriptor. Now, could they take offense? Well, yeah, I mean, why are you lumping me in? I'm from Colombia and I'm not from El Salvador. So, 
but they don't take offense because it's a culture that uses descriptors like that without having negative connotation. So when you're in Ecuador or you, when you're in Colombia and you hear the word gringo, relax, tranquilo. It's, it's nothing to be offended about unless perhaps if a Mexican is saying it to you. Um, but it, it all goes to context, but in all the years that I've been down here in South America, and this goes throughout South America, Argentina, Chile, the use is all basically the same. Simply a distributor, don't be offended, it is no problem. I'm a gringo, you're a gringo, big deal. So I hope that helps. Hope I feel better, I'll get that up.